what the Quality Initiative does is it allows us to change the culture of a building. We needed to set baselines and prove to those that may doubt our true intentions that we can move quality. It really took on a life of its own. Neil Pruitt, he talked about the Quality Initiative and how we're going to have four specific goals and how we're all going to come together, not just my home, but the whole nation. And I was so inspired by him. We started looking at our antipsychotics. Compared to the rest of the nation, we weren't horrible, but we certainly weren't where we needed to be. Oftentimes, these medicines are started in the hospital when patients are acutely sick. We spend a lot of time educating staff that these medicines are off-label, associated with increased rates of stroke and death. The first thing that we looked at was diagnoses. Anybody with dementia, it's very counterindicated to use antipsychotics for dementia. And then we also worked a lot with the families and the residents to develop non-pharmacological approaches that could help when behaviors occur, rather than looking at the use of medication. So we had a resident that we thought would be a perfect candidate, and her name is Geraldine. And she came to us in late 2011. My mother has always been a people person, and she was always very fashionable. I mean, she would dress to the nines with the hat matching the shoes. So after my dad passed, that started causing some psychological problems for her being alone. She came to us on Haldol, an off-label antipsychotic. She was on it for hallucinations. She was very depressed. She was very quiet, kept to herself, didn't socialize much. When I first started to work with Geraldine, she was a little withdrawn and been with her for a while. I figured out that with family and her church, we really got connected. In knowing the resident is the absolute most critical piece in realizing if medications are actually necessary for them. Finding out who she is, what makes her tick, taking them to an activity, giving them music. Sometimes it's food. It's really knowing their needs. Once you get to know them and you know what they like and don't like, trust plays a big role. They rely on us and they depend on us. We've been able to identify Geraldine's strengths and needs. She needs to connect with others. And we've been able to foster those connections. Some we've created and some happen naturally. I'm a people person. <laughs> the happiest part of my day is meeting and getting acquainted with people. Music makes you feel very much alive and happy. I started to see her becoming more of herself, and she was became happy. She would smile more. She talked more. She didn't like being in her room. The only time she would be in her room is she had to go to bed. She's one of our most active residents. She's on the resident council. She has a bubbly personality. She is now a person that will come to me if she thinks I'm having a bad day and she does it for everyone. Because she was doing so well, we took her off of her other antidepressant too, with no negative consequences. To my amazement, other uh, residents, families, they start calling her, hi, Jerry. I'm like, how do you know them? And she said, well, I just talk to everybody and I say bye to everybody, I'm just being me. I've come a long way from, from that. I'm like a different person since I've been here. We know we've got a population that was using a number of unnecessary medicines, and we know that they're unnecessary because we've successfully reduced them. Seeing a population get better as a whole is very rewarding. Looking at our antipsychotics, we were at 19.6 when we started the Quality Initiative. Today, we're at 1.7%. Look at the changes that we have made with the Quality Initiative as a catalyst. What more could you ever ask to accomplish than making this change in her, and she's only one of many. With the Quality Initiative, we were proactive instead of reactive. And that's what the Quality Initiative is all about, is being in front of government programs, proving that if we put the caregivers in charge, we can move quality much better than a government program can. We've made a difference. We have reduced hospital readmissions by 79,000, which saved $820 million. Those are real numbers. The Quality Initiative has come so far in five years, but it's gonna take the next generation of leaders to ensure that we keep that same passion around improving quality. That every day that we wake up, that we're operating better than the day before. So my challenge to all of you is let's ensure that we continue to improve quality.